Welcome to Endgame Magic. My guest today is Dr. Carsten Müller. I'm just kidding, of course. It's not the Endgame Magic. This is our usual setup, but um, something happened in the chess world, and I can show this right now. You can see it on the screen too. Carsten Müller has written a book together with Grandmaster Louis Engel, and we also have the exclusive Fritz trainer version. Um, Whatever you prefer, you can choose. But of course, here we have an interactive uh, menu. We You can replay all the games. You have them in the database. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is very, very nice if you own a computer and if you own a couple of Fritz trainers already. But, Carsten, now let's get into the juice of all of this. It says the, the four-player types standard model. Now, can you give us uh, the idea of the four player types in the nutshell, please? Yeah, of course. And uh, of course, standard model, we will see if it develops into it. It was introduced by Danish Grandmaster Lars Bohansen in 2005 in his excellent work, Foundations of Chess Strategy. And it is based on a model for business managers by Jean-Marie Hiltrop. Hmm. And it seems like this this comparison between business managers and chess uh, players fits very well. But I have to admit, in 2005, it didn't catch on 100%. So we, we will uh, make some advertisement and hope that the model will catch on even more. Okay. Okay. Activists. There are world championships... Alekhine, Tal, Spassky, Kasparov and Arendt. And uh, players like Shirov, Morozovic, Neshmedinov, Topalov and so on. And Judith Aronian and Judith Polga and Carsten Müller are activists. Carsten Müller is also an activist. So is, yeah. this, is it helpful to know yourself that you are an activist so you can improve your strengths and take care of your weaknesses a bit? Yes. Okay. And especially for an activist, because activists has clear-cut weaknesses. They have the most clear-cut weaknesses from the four player types. So here it is especially oh. helpful. And there are even hyper-activists like the young Misha Tal and Neshme Dinov. Tal was the only hyper-activist world champion. Their strengths. Activists... Um, Rate initiative and attacking chances very high and the material lower. For hyperactivists, this is even what is a queen if you have a king attack, yeah? But yeah, you you guess it. I think I'm an ultra activist in this case, maybe. <laughs> Just okay. Uh, they're often willing to sacrifice material to get attacking chances. At, yeah, there are many famous quotes by Misha Tal, like there there are correct sacrifices and mine. Only a hyperactivist can can make this quote. No other player type. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Fi They enough. have a fine feeling for initiative and dynamics and are willing um, to make do with statical weaknesses. This, of course, can also be a weaknesses. I can, if you always play casting short and g2, g4, this can lead to many fine wins. But as I can say myself, sometimes the enemy knights on f4 and h4 can later be annoying. I, You can find in us Müller games where this proves true. And yeah, this, uh, of course, um, yeah, can be weaknesses, but often leads to um, very fascinating games on the board. The young Tal, Shirov, Kasparov, you, you name it and you guess it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so their weaknesses, uh, they often play uh, pawn moves, which have more long-term weaknesses than strengths. They look, for the moment, they look good, but in the long run... They can often be bad. They are not so. St they they overrate their own king attack and underestimate the enemy's king attack. They are not so strong in the defense. Play often sacrifices, material sacrifices, which are objectively not correct. It doesn't say that they are not dangerous, but this is one difference to pragmatics. Pra there are some pragmatics that would never play incorrect sacrifices, okay. but activists, you know, they. Yeah, there's a big difference to the pragmatics. It's like you're reading a book about my mind right now. So, But yeah, keep on, keep on. Let's see if uh, everything is correct. <laughs> okay, then yeah, with, the ti uh, with the time, it's not so, not so clear. But some activists uh, have not such good time management and come into high time trouble, like, for example, Alexander Grishok, 
but this is not so easy. Oh, yeah. I always had a good time management, so this might be a different question. So it's a bit this is a bit, bit risky because this is connected to the emotional axis, and we have with this model we have cut down the emotional axis. So yeah, but they are often strong in uh, rapid and blitz, shach, uh, blitz chess because they play intuitively, and for intuitive players it doesn't matter so much when the time is. Uh, short. Often they get more pragmatic later in their career. So Lars Bohansen also characterizes sure. Alekin Spassky and Kasparov as pragmatics. But the young Kasparovs give so many fantastic ex examples and also of weaknesses of activists that it was easy to decide that Kasparov should be an activist in our book. Gotcha, yes. So the, between activists, and, yeah, most often activists get more pragmatic the older they get because when you always play G, G2, G4 and then lose half of the games due to the enemy knights, you start to get more pragmatic there. Okay, so I am 42 now. How many more years do I have to wait, <laughs> Carsten? Please, I need to know. Uh, are you an activist? I or? definitely, I'm the, I'm the, yeah, I'm, I'm the middle genius between Kasparov and Tal. That's what I would say. Are you at home an activist? Uh, I, I think, I think, can I can I give the uh, idea that many hobby players are tend to be an activist more than well, professionals? Well, we don't. Okay, this is a very deep and difficult question, True. and there haven't been made deep as investigations there. What I can say is, in the business managers model, there have have been investigations, and there the the um, relation should be between activists and pragmatics versus reflectors and series three to one. Oh, so really? So there are three wow. times more. And uh, yeah, in, in chess, most, hmm. most players start as activists, I guess, and mm -hmm. get more pragmatic later. And it is even then a bit difficult to say the young Tal definitely is a hyperactivist, but then comes some change and the late Tal is, might even be a pragmatic. So, huh. yeah. Uh, and in chess, we don't know, but I tend to agree with you that activists should be the most common type if we count the pragmatic activists together with that. Now, I would say this might be part because there is just a little lack of general chess knowledge. But then again, we have Kasparov and Tal and other players. So, um, yeah, who am I to, to, to judge something about that? And yeah, anyway. Okay, activists are often willing to take risks. This is by, with hike by activists even more so. So they often have long series of games without any draw. Hmm. Uh, this can, of course, also be a weakness, like Larsen and Taimanov found out in their 6 to 0 losses against Fischer. You just play on and play. All other types would say, well, I lost all games. One moment, maybe a draw. They said, no, draw is not a result. We go on. Yeah, uh, also sounds very familiar. Wow. So they often have a high willing to take risks. Uh, yeah, training options. Yeah, it makes often sense to get more pragmatic, to study games of Kasparov from the later uh, period, also to study games from reflectors, uh, but try to be a bit more pragmatic of, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. Opponents, activists against each other often tends to lead to very fantastic, spectacular duels. Most dangerous opponents might be strong reflectors like Magnus Carlsen can be, or, or Karpov. Can be studied in the World Championship matches, Carlsen against Anand, for example, or mm. Karpov against Kasparov at the beginning. Okay, because then the strengths of the activists don't come to the forefront because the reflector stops it with the good uh, uh, feeding for active prophylaxis. Yeah, yeah. Can I quickly, so Nepom Yashi is, I don't think he is an activist, he's more a pragmatist. I agree, right? I, yeah. I, I agree, but of course he has some activist character. He, he is, there yes. are many pragmatic activists where it's not so easy to divide. I got gotcha, you. But we, yeah. we, we gave him a pragmatic, but yeah. So there is kind of a pie chart and if this amount is mm. like a pragmatic and this amount is activists and... Yeah, yeah, something like that. I and you, you. Uh, as hyperactivist, it is difficult nowadays. You have yeah. to be a bit more pragmatic in modern times for several reasons. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay. There's only been one hyperactivist world champion, the young Misha, <laughs> the one and only Misha Tal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then openings. Op activists often uh, drive opening theory forward in concrete risky lines. Uh, uh, especially legendary, of course, was Kasparov's chess-based database with many 
fantastic novelties. They often play E4 with sharp variations of the open Sicilian or whatever. Even even King's Gambit or Al Gaia Gambit or whatever Gambit can only be played by <laughs> activists because no other player type would say that Al Gaia <laughs> Gambit without me. But activists would say nice to sacrifice everybody everywhere. And yeah, with Black Knight over King's Indian, whatever. But okay, so so sharp variations with concrete. Um, Lines are often in the repertoire of the activists. Wow. Okay. Are you satisfied with the activist uh, no. characterization? I want to see an example of the ca uh, activists now. I will, I will okay. do that. So here we are with an example of the one and only, the magician, Mishatal. And this is a hyperactive player. Are there... He's probably one of the, you, you mentioned one of the only hyperactive players who were that good of a chess player, who were the the only champion. The only world champion, the only yeah. hyperactivist world champion. Did, is there any other hyperactivist chess player who is at least 2,600 or yeah, something? Yeah, 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 Mami, Mami Yarov or oh, Nakamura yeah. or... Yes, and he recently played the very, very uh, fantastic G4 um, in the uh, Tata Steel tournament, by the way. So I, I like that a lot. He's a young, Yarov, interesting. He's a young Shirov and having young a Shirov, comeback yeah. now. So yes, and the others, yes, and they are doubtlessly more. It's just, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That, uh, that is just the biggest example of. Uh, but okay. the only, the only, there are only 16 world champions. This makes it always easier to answer <laughs> that kind of question because otherwise, the history there are so many. But there are only six, this makes this. But what is also interesting is that the types fall 5-3-5-3, three, three, which is, I think, also a good sign for the model. And that it, uh, yeah, and this is more, you know, equally distributed than we guess that the whole humanity is distributed. Mm -hmm. There, I think, the world champions are more equally distributed and they especially have five reflectors. While in general, reflectors should be very seldom, but we haven't reached the reflectors now. We are with the activists. We will have this in the next part, obviously. But for now, activists. Let's go. Okay, what would you play with black hair here? What did Misha play? Uh, so white Okay, white is... I can make it a bit easier. White is better. You cannot equalize. Botvinnik has more space. Here's Botvinnik kind of position. And in the lo if you make nothing, then we will roll all over you wherever you like. Yeah, we have more space and you can't do much. So you I have to you have to do something. Well, so as an activist player, so this should be actually one thing that um, yeah, I I would like to play as black probably now. Yeah, what would you play with black? Uh, there's nice options. I don't think i mean i would love to play the bishop to b5 but of course it's not there's this knight the so. bishop you cannot but this i think is also b by the way by that engine also given it of oh. course it it weakens this i know it has a disadvantage it weakens this square and yeah. this may hurt later but for a hyperactivist weakening such squares you know it's like you know no 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 point big deal no absolutely yeah i agree activists yeah and maybe <laughs> next time Misha will play like that yeah well, the computer, by the way, uh, at least the give, and this would be, may, might be objectively best, but would have been a terrible choice. It, it, if he would have played like this, he would most likely no. have lost. So you can see how the player type and the objective, objectivity makes a difference. Sure. The engine thinks this is the best move, but it would have been, a, but white is still better, and it would have been a big mistake. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, the, the human point makes a difference. The human factor in chess makes a big difference in this moment. Gotcha. So I I believe also activists, I'm not sure if you mentioned it earlier, uh, they like to keep the queens on the board of as course. long as possible. Of course. And so here, yeah, objectively, the, rock, the move is bad, but it won the game in beautiful style. I like but that. But objectively, it's a mistake. Yeah, but, uh, in the yeah, but I like that, of course. This, yes. is another, this is another mistake, but okay. Now comes the thing. Why is really much, much better already? How should Bart Winning have punished it? Hmm. Yeah, but it's obvious when you play against the activists and this starts, you have to be, you have to either stop it or make deal with the complications later or the wave of complications will roll all over you. So maybe you double up the rooks too on C2 and C1. Well, I don't like it. This is not the right okay. uh, approach. This is not the right approach. I don't like that. Hmm. You should use this moment. You yeah. Should. Here is, Tal has... Of course, is not Tal has not sacrificed the, pawn, the square c6, but the pawn is hanging. I didn't even see that. Okay, 
Yeah, so you should use it. A3. Yeah, you should just take it, right? Oh no, 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 no. This is not. You should play oh, a three. Okay. Yeah, that was the thing I thought. If about you for a take moment, so. it, but then you then b six, right? Yeah, I have yeah. b six, or some some version of things. No, no, you should play a three. Okay. And now you should take it. Uh -huh. And now you, this can be met like this, and you gonna resign. Oi. And uh, yeah, here you have now, you have just won a pawn now. End of story is you have won a pawn and it's, yeah, and a pawn is a pawn. And there is no real dramatic improvement for black in this position, only that a pawn is lost. Yeah, a, and a3 is, and if you if you go back, then you have lost attacking coordinate. Yeah. Now you have lost uh, attacking coordination and harmony and white is winning according to the computer. Here, basically, you are busted. I gotcha. But okay, for hyperactivists, you know, there are sac correct sacrifices in mine, and who cares? But when you play against these hyperactivists, you have to be very careful. This is also not, not a bad move, of course, but these half moves, they can backfire. But objectively, mm -hmm. it's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Objectively, it's good. Okay, and what now with black? Now again comes a big difference between the objectivity and the practical value of the move. Tal played a move which loses by force, but it was nevertheless a very strong move helped to win the World Championship match. I immediately think of E4. Okay, that wasn't it. <laughs> Silence in the room. Uh, probably it, it, it fulfills the first suggest if the first thing it loses by force. This, this <laughs> that's part, what I thought of. This yes. uh, part of the condition it fulfills, <laughs> but the other part it probably doesn't fulfill. Yeah. I guess. Ah, oh, those other. Yeah, parts. it's uh, the other parts. I probably guess we you don't get enough here. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. So it, it would be a sacrifice, uh, maybe also a tile style sacrifice. Yeah. And I don't say you, I wouldn't also say that, yeah, this is when you play against these hyperactivists, yeah, everything is active. Why, why is also winning after the thing, but it was by no, you have to then find 10 non-trivial only moves. Then you are winning. But in, if you make in one moment a mistake, then, you know, then, yeah, nice uh, to meet you. Fair enough. Okay. So, but, okay, but, okay, uh, objectively, Tal's move is losing as well. So, but I think E4 has some, E4 in a way has certain I like kind it of, for yeah, a lot of reasons, but, but of course, but I blocked I, my what own. What I don't exactly. like is that you block your heavy man. Yeah, I just, I didn't think of that. Of course, I thought I could pull him but, over after a check on e5 but and, this kind of yeah. argument we could continue forever because That's Tal's true. move is losing by force and then i have no bite you know but what the, <laughs> okay what should tal have played objectivity what does the computer say but it would have been a very bad choice of course and what did he play <sighs> yeah knight h5 must move so uh Knight. Ah, knight f4. Okay, yeah. I think I... He, he should, yeah, he should have played this according to the computer, but it would have been a very bad choice because here, um, you know, this is not now whatever. Bon Winning might even play this and then Bon Winning would have most likely won. Yes. Yeah. We are playing for two results. It's Bon, bon Winning as a theorist. We are following Bon Winning's theory. We must bring Bon Winning out of his theory. Yeah. This move is losing by force. But it's nevertheless it's beautiful. One of yes, of the big moves of the World Championship match, yes, and yes. one of the big style sacrifices. And, and unfortunately, I remember this game now too, and I should have noticed that. Ah, uh, yeah. No anyway, problem. okay. And now, how to refute the sacrifice? Um, this is one of the things. Okay, this will be take us for ages. Yeah. It took it without the computers and before it. They it the humans didn't manage. First, it was Kasparov was needed to to really make it. Okay, a three taking. F3 only, but you know, you must wow. find always the right sort of moves. It looks a bit ugly, but a piece is a piece. Uh, yes, difficult. And now comes the big move, which destroys the black in a higher sense. The only big move. Hmm. Here's a big move which destroys black. Yeah, in some higher sense. And if, of course, Borwinning would have seen that, but yeah, well, with hindsight at the computer, then Kasparov is easier than over the board. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. Mm. Now comes the big move. No, I don't see a big move. A4, right now, sorry. and then whatever oh, okay. happens, wide wins. Uh -huh, okay. But it lands the bishop the helping hand and brings in rook a3 and whatever comes in. We are, we are winning now. Wow. Okay. So it's also 
the activists also are swindling a little bit. Yes. That is part of their game. Yes. Yeah. Yes, especially the hyperactivists. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. um, you have a point. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Not not all in the same degree. But yeah, objectivity is not a big part of this. Is one of the big differences between pragmatics and activists. Pragmatics for them, objectivity is a more or less important criterion. For hyperactivists, it doesn't matter at all, and activists are somewhere in between. <laughs> okay. uh, you are laughing, but in a way, it is like that. <laughs> it's funny though. So <laughs> yeah, the computers will never understand it, but them. But <laughs> that's another. We will we'll deal knows? with that. We will deal with that later. So okay. How did this continue though? Bishop d2 was a mistake. Now um, it's uh, fine. But Tal made a mistake here. What should he have played? Bishop e5 or queen takes b2? Very seldom case for Misha to make a mistake in these kind of questions. Well, I, I'm afraid that uh, although bishop e5 looks very good, I and believe must that... Be, must be played. Okay. It, this must oh. be played first too. And here oh, black has... Oh, um, that is a nasty move. And yeah. usually this is a strong um, this is a strong part of activists. And here black has at least enough compensation for the material, maybe even more. I see. Yeah. At least enough compensation. Yeah, for several reasons we don't want to go into details. But I also think so that... So many options. Yeah. And yeah, and as hiker activists, you don't, you don't calculate everything to the end because you can't anyway. You calculate <laughs> some lines and then you feel that it... That, yeah... You you tend that you feel white has no direct way and you you feel that you feel that these bishops they have it. Yeah. 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 Okay, white yeah. might have an extra piece, but who cares? Yeah, I mean me in a nutshell, really. Myself at least. Yeah, but other player types like pragmatics would lead more, you know, more lines or computer evaluations or whatever but as hyperactivists you say whatever comes it doesn't matter you play this line and play it play it okay okay so this was a mistake hmm and uh, now um, white is winning again but how here yeah here but winning could have won again well isn't isn't no. the queen just hanging no no here black is winning here you have an extra rook, but you are losing. My gosh. These hyperactivists, you know, they are big men. You are losing. You have an extra rook, but Misha has this man. And this I man see. is going to kill you. Yeah, he because can go a you bit can ahead. just take, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, and okay. here again, Misha, Misha played bishop f4 and it won. But rook takes c3 would have won directly in big. Very beautiful. You have an extra rook, but it doesn't matter. This line was given by Misha in his annotation. Jeez. He's a genius, yeah? A magician. Yeah, yeah. I think his name is uh, pretty much accurate, yeah. And he is, uh, yeah, he, he, uh, he is a game from his, yeah, he was the only world champion. His books, his analysis, his, he uh, has earned him many, many fans. And this is one of the reasons why they say that activists and hyperactivists play most interesting and fascinating games more yeah in a way more attractive from a certain point of view than the other player types but okay this is the computer will, the computers will never understand that i know but and i also i mean that's part of my big fun for chess that there are that it that you can be that creative the okay. only bad thing is that it doesn't always work. Now, what a pity. Now, now, now it works and be creative. And Misha uh, Botvinnik, uh, as serious, didn't, he wanted. He had the theory you exchange queens against Tal and then you win, but here you lost. Now, think this as an activist. Why to move and win? Not, not draw, no series, just activist. You're going to take. Okay. Then you're going to take. Okay. And now you even have alternatives to win. Floor found the way. To win, but Rook C1, by the way, also wins. This Rook B7? Even, no. even this wins, by the way. Okay. But Flor's win is more in an activist style. Bishop E4. Mm -hmm. And you just give back. You give back the material. Now, oh. even Black has an extra exchange. Smothered mate approaching. But White is winning. Nice. The theorist Bodwini couldn't change into an activist mode and uh, followed the theory against Tal. You should exchange queens. The theory proved wrong here in this case, and Misha prevailed. Interesting. 
Interesting. You can adjust your player type in certain moments because it might be more effective. And uh, the stronger you get, the more uh, the, the more you universal of universal you of course also you get. But this would yeah. be yeah, of course. Me, later, Misha also became more and more pragmatic. And 1966 was uh, his year of change in German Wandlungsjahr when he changed from an hyperactivist towards a pragmatic and then he had a long series of games without losses nice in 1966 was this year <sighs> excellent thank Worth, you very much yeah. yeah so that was the activist with the the hyperactivist uh, um, example and yeah if you can relate to this just as much as i can and if you're just shaking your head and go like yeah that's exactly me <laughs> But if you cannot, it might be good to take a look at one of the other parts. And even if you can, it might be good to take a look at the other parts. The next time we will talk about the reflector. See you then. See you.